They kind of look like leaves. Throw the seeds in the central pulp away. You can of course keep them if you like making tomato sauce or you want to make a tomato dressing. You can puree them off with some olive oil and they make quite a good sauce for a salad. Uh, next up we're going to grate our beetroot. This is the other part for our beetroot relish. I've had to buy cooked beetroot. This is just what's readily available and that's the idea. We're trying to use really available things. With a cheese grater you'll see my fingers are flat. It's impossible to cut yourself on a cheese grater if your fingers are flat to the, to the steel. Uh, for the potato gnocchi, part of the mix will need some grated parmesan cheese. That's about half a cup. Yeah. Removing the rind. Now we're just going to peel top and tail and cut in half the parsnips. So we'll just peel and chop the pears now. Um, it's easier if you take the top and the bottom of the pears off first. Cool. Um, just simply after we've peeled the pears, we need to cut them in quarters lengthways. And then on an angle, again, of about 45 degrees, just cut out the central firm piece and the seeds. After that, split each quarter into three and then cut them into fairly coarse chunks. Um, doesn't matter how, you know, fine your cutting is, you know, mix and match pieces is fine. After all, it's just for your house. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on the pears. This will just ensure that they stay nice and white rather than discolouring like they do. We're going to do some a few roast baby new potatoes to have with our main course. Um, I'm just going to cut them up so that they're equal sizes. Um, it's quite important to, when you cook things that things are similar sort of size. Just because they cook at the same time, there's nothing worse than you know biting into something that's raw on the inside. Whereas biting into something that's completely cooked through, it's just not nice as a meal. And then So that's the preparation stuff done for the evening's meal. Um, it's all laid out in front of us. We can see that everything's ready. Um, after this we can then start cooking. So I've just cleared the bench off um, to be ready to make the potato gnocchi. I've put the vegetables over by the cooker. I'm going to cut the potatoes in half and scoop the pulp out into a bowl. I'm then going to guesstimate about half the amount of flour, put in my two eggs and one yolk, and my half a cup of parmesan cheese. I'm then going to beat the mixture quite thoroughly, season it up, and then turn it onto a well-floured bench so that I can work it. Salt. It's important to taste this mix. Um, you can't add any flavour into this later, and if you don't have enough seasoning, it's horrible. So once we've got the gnocchi to the dough stage, we then need to go to the stove and put a pot of boiling salted water on. Then we'll come back, we'll cut the gnocchi up and transfer it to a well dusted and lined tray. This is just to hold the gnocchi on so it's easier to put it into the water. So now we're going to just cut the gnocchi up into pieces and then transfer it to a tray. It 
having prepared all our vegetables, now all we have to do is worry about cooking them, along with our meats, of course. Um, so we're going to start with our tomatoes, which we're going to dry sort of slowly in a 140 degree oven. We're going to put them skin side down on a small tray, drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil, sprinkle them with the salt and pepper, and a little bit of dried thyme. Okay. And that goes into an oven at 140 degrees for about 40 minutes. Right, so now that we've got the tomatoes in the oven, we'll move on to getting our sweet finished started. And to do that, we'll make our ganache first, which means we'll need to melt your 100 grams of milk chocolate in the microwave. We're going to take our melted chocolate out of the microwave and whip in our double cream to make a ganache. We'll then put that in the fridge to allow it to set. We then need to melt our 120 grams of dark chocolate, our 60 grams of milk, 75 grams of butter that are together in one bowl in the microwave until they're melted. Um, once the chocolate's of course melted, we'll crack three eggs into the mix and beat it. Just a bit of shell. Pour the mix, while it's still warm, into our moulds. And set them on side. Okay. Now it's time to come, we've got to cook our gnocchi. It's quite simple, you need a pot of rapidly boiling salted water, a wooden spoon and your gnocchi. When your water is boiling rapidly, you stir it. And you want to get quite a good stream in this. This prevents the gnocchi from sticking to the bottom of the pot. Then grabbing each of the corners of the paper, lift the gnocchi up, hold them over the pot and just tip the paper in. You then stir the water, not scraping the bottom of the pot, just until it's about to come back to the boil. Now you've got to do this quite soon after you've made the gnocchi or else they're just going to stick to pieces, stick together. Allow the water to cook until the gnocchi rise to the surface. We'll then drain them off and cool them under running cold water. So just as they're floated up, lift them up, test them, they should feel relatively firm. Grab your pot, throw a colander. Turn the gnocchi to the pot. And just run cold water on the over the gnocchi until they're cold. We now I've drained off the gnocchi and it's here. We then need to put a little bit of olive oil through the gnocchi just to stop it from sticking together and toss them up. Now these gnocchi can keep for about two days in the fridge. Um, we're going to fry them to cook them so you can just you know, keep, make the batch up early, keep it in the fridge for a few days before you need them. Now for the roasted vegetables. We're going to have a few roast potatoes, as I said earlier, with our meal, and a few roast parsnips. So I'll just get the trays ready to put in the oven. Two trays, one for the potatoes, one for the parsnips. Plenty of butter. Parsnips especially really like butter. Bit of oil. A glug, really. A sprinkling of salt and pepper, and then just simply toss them up. To give them a good coating. And we'll just put them into the oven. It's been about five minutes now since we've made the ganache. Um, it, we've had it in the fridge, so it's set up quite well. So we're just going to put a sort of spoonful of each into each of the moulds with the chocolate fondant mix. We'll then set that up in the fridge. It needs to be set and cold uh, before you can bake it. So you can make that, you know, a few days beforehand, 